It's January 4th, 2004. The Seattle Seahawks are in overtime of a wild back and forth affair at Lambeau Field, close to winning their first playoff game in 19 years. Quarterback Matt Hasselbeck is trying to make Green Bay just a pit stop on the way east to Philadelphia in the divisional round. After carrying the Seahawks on his back all game, he's facing a huge third and long, the kind of dramatic moment quarterbacks live for. But at this point, everyone involved only knows how exactly we arrived at this climactic moment. So let's rewind. The Packers are pretty fortunate to have even crashed the postseason party. They started the 2003 season off by dropping five of their first nine games. And though they got hot late to finish 10 and six, they still would have been ice fishing in January if the Vikings had simply won in Tempe against the three and 12 Cardinals. But Nate Poole snagged this fourth down prayer from Josh McCown, got both feet down, and survived Anquan Bolden's super vicious celebration, leading to mass hysteria some 1,800 miles away in the stands at Lambeau. Meanwhile, the Seahawks are in year five of the Mike Holmgren regime. Packer fans remember this guy. Holmgren spent seven years as the head coach in Green Bay, leading them to six playoff berths, two conference championships, and a Super Bowl 31 title which brought the Lombardi Trophy back home. Holmgren was the NFL's preeminent quarterback whisperer throughout the 90s, most notably underscored by the Packers' trade for Falcons' third-string quarterback Brett Favre. Under Holmgren, Favre won three MVPs and became an all-time great. But it wasn't just him. Holmgren would find and develop several unheralded quarterbacks who would blossom into pro bowlers once they left his warm, comfy cocoon, including this guy, Matt Hasselbeck. Taken in the sixth round of Holmgren's final Packers draft in 1998, Hasselbeck spent his rookie season on their practice squad, but Holmgren liked the potential he showed. That offseason, Seahawks owner Paul Allen lured Holmgren to Seattle by offering total control of their football operation and essentially giving him a blank check. After a couple years of the John Kitna experience, Holmgren traded for Favre's backup, reuniting the two in the Pacific Northwest. Now Holmgren's facing his old team in the playoffs, which is coached and quarterbacked by his protégés. Facing third and long in overtime, it's on Hasselbeck to prove his coach was right to pry him from the Packers. But the plan probably wasn't to put the game on his shoulder this much in the first place. It's pretty chilly, the second coldest game the Seahawks had ever played in their history. Conditions ripe for running the ball, which theoretically shouldn't be a problem for Seattle. Sean Alexander's a Pro Bowl back, and they're outstanding up front, with two All-Pros on the left side of their O-line. But right guard Chris Gray is out for the first time all year, forcing Porkchop Womack into guard duty for the first time in his career. And the Packers were able to hold the Seahawks' ground game in check, with Grady Jackson in particular capitalizing on Gray's absence, and Alexander had season lows in rushing yards and yards per carry. Jackson wasn't a Packer to start the season, he was a saint. But New Orleans waived him in early November and Green Bay pounced, providing a much needed boost to their run defense. It worked. The Packers went from a team anybody could run on in the first half of the year to not that in the second half. On the other side, the Packers have Amon Green. Green was drafted by Seattle and spent a couple seasons there backing up Ricky Waters, overlapping for a year with Holmgren, who didn't think much of Green, and traded him to the Packers for the NFL equivalent of a half-eaten ham sandwich and a bag of peanuts. In the four years since, Green's rushed for more yards than anyone else in the league. And he's got an exceptional offensive line too, with the five big fellas up front starting every game and sending multiple guys to Honolulu. But Green's also stuck in neutral for much of the day. This game is gonna come down to the right arms of the legendary Favre and his former understudy, Hasselbeck. A quarterback needs someone to throw it to though, and that someone for Hasselbeck on the last two third and longs has been somewhat unexpected. Alex Bannister, who's a pro bowler, but not as a receiver, as a special teams gunner, and he has just seven catches across the first three seasons of his career. Their first OT drive came to a screeching halt when Bannister nearly fumbled the ball away on third and long, and the one they faced before that also saw the ball come his way before falling harmlessly to the ground. Why Bannister? Well, because the other Seahawks have been dropping passes left and right. And even his usually sturdy O-line was leaking, like on this next play from scrimmage. Steve Hutchinson might be the very best guard on the planet, but look at Cledius Hunt just knock him on his ass en route to clobbering Hasselbeck. 
At halftime, the Packers led 13-6, but in the opening drive of the third quarter, Hasselbeck carried the Seahawks down the field, setting up a first and goal from the nine yard line, where he then tried to connect with Corin Robinson against the tight coverage of Al Harris. This is the very first playoff game Harris has started after arriving in a trade with the Eagles when the Packers were looking to upgrade from Tyrone Williams at the cornerback spot opposite Mike McKenzie. And boy was challenging him a risky proposition. But Al Harris, he had the angle on that. And if Matt Hasselbeck had not thrown this ball high, good chance that ball was going to be intercepted and going 90 some yards the other way. Two plays later, Holmgren showed why Paul Allen backed the Brinks truck up for him when he drew up a dazzling play in which Hasselbeck was to throw the ball directly to Packers linebacker Hannibal Navies, such that Navies would deflect the ball at a perfect trajectory for Hutchinson to pluck it out of the air, rumble forward down to the one yard line, and, much like Lloyd Christmas, totally redeem himself. From there, Sean Alexander punched it in to tie things at 13. Second half rushing TDs from a yard out would become a bit of a theme moving forward. Hasselbeck also led Seattle down to the one the next time they got the ball, where, again, Alexander plunged in to give the Hawks a seven point lead. Amon Green thought that looked like fun, so he rumbled in from the one on each of the Packers' next two drives to put the pack up a touchdown. But less than two minutes later, Alexander nodded things up yet again with the half's fifth one yard rushing touchdown with under a minute left in regulation. But that was still plenty of time for an old gunslinger like Favre. It's been a chaotic year for Favre, and a game-winning drive would only add to his legend. The thumb on Favre's passing hand was broken in St. Louis back in Week 7, and the night before a crucial Monday night matchup with the Raiders in Week 16, his father passed away. Favre decided to play, and he shredded Oakland in a career-defining performance. This connection with Javon Walker got them in field goal range for Ryan Longwell, one of the NFL's top kickers. But in these frigid conditions, Longwell's 47-yard attempt to win the game fell just short. The Seahawks survived regulation. Now, overtime. And as he approached midfield for the OT coin toss, Hasselbeck is giddy. And, well, not at all lacking for confidence if we listen in. We want the so. ball, we're gonna score. <laughs> oh boy. Hasselbeck obliviously pulled a Joe Namath mid-game into the ref's mic for the 70,000 rabid Packer fans in the stands and really the whole world to hear. Ballsy. Okay, on to sudden death with Hasselbeck getting first crack. Sean Alexander continues to lack any running room before that third and long near fumble by Bannister. Seattle's D would step up with a quick stop, giving Hasselbeck another chance to make good on his promise. His wideouts continue to have butter lathered all over their hands, and after a timeout, the Hawks are again facing a huge third and long. Convert here, and the Seahawks are well on their way to field goal range, a trip to Philadelphia, and backing up their starting quarterback's oh-so-bold declaration. Welcome to a moment in history. They're coming. The pass is picked off. Intercepted. Back the other way. The Green Bay Packers advance. Touchdown, Al Harris. Welcome to the end of this Rewinder episode. But wait, there's more. Feel free to click over here to peruse others, or for all my fellow dorks out there, a lovely safe haven can be found here in Dorktown.